What's going on, arcade nerds? Um, I'm designing something that will be sold at some point during 2019 um, that involves high voltage. I don't want to tell you all the things that I'm working on because it's kind of a secret right now. Uh, but um, one of the things that I'm designing involves high voltage. And um, uh, I don't know how to use Eagle or KiCad or Dip Trace or any of those PCB, um, any of that PCB software. And I know it sounds stupid, it's just like a mental block. It, it's something I want to learn, but I just, I never put the effort forth to learn it. So what I do instead is I do things the hard way sometimes, you know? Um, I'll sit there with a piece of paper and I'll, and I'll write out schematics. Or I will mess around with Microsoft Paint and write out schematics in there and so on. And I know it's kind of the backwards way to do it, but that's just how I, how I do it. And whenever I need a PCB made, I, I find a buddy and I say, hey, hey, you know how to use Eagle. Can you, uh, can you make this, you know, uh, onto a board? So that's what I did with this. Um, this is just a prototype. This is not the, the whole deal. Um, this is just a does, will it work sort of thing. Uh, what this is, is this is a circuit board that, I, well, I originally designed it to uh, actually actually wrote it out in one night. And it, luckily, it worked the first try, which is awesome. <laughs> but um, anyways, I originally, originally designed this work with Wells Gardner. Uh, 4900 flyback and when I did some testing and I found out that the 4900 flyback wasn't really the most reliable flyback when I tried to to, to put it under stress it failed immediately this is just the stupid Chinese flybacks but I did find that the Wells Gardner uh, 60 uh, blah, 60 yeah 6100 Wells Gardner 6100 flyback um, works great <clears throat> As a matter of fact I uh, abused it. I abused it. I mean, I, I put a lot of stress on that flyback, and I cannot get that flyback to fry. So that's actually something pretty impressive to me. But anyways, um, so this is just the nuts and bolts. This is not um, all the rest of the circuits. This, the board will, will eventually be, you know, twice, two or even three times this size. Um, but I, you know, when I, when I did that, I built some goofy stuff to try to stress test it, and I, and since I had high voltage, I was playing around with with high voltage, because you know I had it. <laughs> but um, uh, so in this video, I'm just going to um, let, let's let's play with some high voltage stuff, right? <laughs> okay. Well, um, how do I how do I start? What do I say? Well. This right here is, keep in mind it's a prototype, this is not a finished ordeal. Yes, it looks like crap, I know. It's supposed to look like crap right now. But um, the way I made the high voltage circuit is I ended up using a DC to DC converter, very much like um, Fred Konoposka's kit. And I used a 555 oscillator, very much like, um, or timer, very much like a Amplophone or the 6100. And what that what that uh, 555 is doing is it's sending out a square wave, and that square wave is um, pulling the gate, or uh, you know, giving voltage to the gate of a MOSFET, and the MOSFET is powering a um, Wells Gardner 6100 flyback. Well, <clears throat> and I actually had this connected to a monitor. It had a perfect picture. Everything looks great. Um, here's my my socket and everything I cut off, but. Um, I don't want to tell you too much because I don't want to. I don't want to let out the let let out the secret. But <laughs> but <laughs> but <clears throat> so I uh, I wanted to make sure this is right. Um, th this part was right because the other parts I guarantee will be right. You know what I mean? Uh, you, you know because uh, for example, there's going to be voltage regulation things like that, and it's it, it needs to be different than your average voltage regulation that is on standard monitors. Yeah, made in the past and and today, it's it's going to be a, a different different setup than you normally would see, and I can't tell you why yet. <laughs> but um, and so uh, I had this connected to a tube. I let it run normally for about three days, and I had a perfect picture for three days straight. And by the way, this is on a vector monitor. This is okay, great. Everything's running nice and cool. Nothing's you know, no, nothing's nothing. Nothing has damaged itself. So. Purposely, I try to 
uh, put a lot of stress on this to see what would fail first. And, um, you know, I still haven't got anything to fail yet. Which, which I guess that's a good thing, but I kind of wanted to see what smokes, you know? <laughs> but, uh, so I did things like I powered two tubes at once. And uh, it, still, it still kept running. Um, so I, I, I eventually made this. This is a, a, a high voltage ion motor. And what I did was, I had this so it would short out every one revolution. Okay, and so what that would do is this is you know I suppose I could have done I could have used resistors instead, but I did this because it was actually kind of fun. Whatever, uh, me and my son worked on it. He, he you know he he learned a few things, <laughs> but uh, anyways, what this did is every one revolution, this piece right here, this is just uh, um, sitting on a pin right there. Okay, every one revolution, this would short out the tube. And cause the tube um, to, to, to lose its voltage, right? And this flyback would be forced to recharge the tube, okay? So, the way, the way I figure is the two most stressful times, the two most stressful things that can happen to a high voltage supply in a monitor is number one, heat, and number two, the uh, charging up a uncharged tube. The very first turn on is probably the most stressful, um, for, uh, is the most stress your flyback is going to see, okay? And of course that and heat and so I purposely made that recharge every it, it would it would it would do a full revolution every oh I'd say every one second okay and I let that run for three days straight three days straight it ran and it would constantly be forced to recharge a dead tube every one second and it still ran so I said okay that's great and so you know I got kind of greedy and I says well when will this thing fail so I eventually add another screw, and another screw, and another screw, and eventually I got to this this point right here where I where I literally discharged the high voltage this many times before the it, you know you know to force this to work harder, and uh, it still didn't fail. So I thought that was pretty cool. But anyways, it was kind of a cool effect, and I figured I'd show you guys what this is, and um, maybe. Uh, you know, maybe you could experiment yourself. Be careful with high voltage. But, <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Um, what I did was, I have the positive side of the and uh, 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 this this suction cup right here. This is the, this is a positive, okay. And I have uh, the ground going over here. And what it's doing is, um, how do I say it? It's kind of like, hmm. Okay, let's say air has no charge, but but the bar that's spinning does have a charge, okay? And and the transfer of electron between that air and that bar is what's actually moving the bar. Um, but the extra sparks is just for show, which I ended up I ended up having the voltage just right, so it would spark every time, which would actually discharge the tube. So uh, I hope that makes sense. I don't know, but okay, uh, plug that in, Kelly. Eventually, that's going to spin up and go pretty fast. Let me turn off some of these lights so you can kind of see. Can turn off this light. Turn off this light. Maybe you can see a little better. Yeah, you know, you know what, Kelly? Turn off the main light. Okay, that's better. It's nothing but an ion high voltage motor. Okay? And the way I designed this was is just, just, just for fun, but it really did have a purpose. This actually purposely discharged the tube um, while it ran to force that flyback to get back up to zero volts. But, okay, turn that back on. So let's find something else to experiment with. Okay, I'm just screwing around with this with a CD here. I mean, I'm just experimenting. We're just having fun. Um, anyways, so um, I'm gonna burn this sucker or try to or see what happens. So uh, Kelly, hook that up.
Hmm. Okay, disconnect it. Connect it again just because. See, it looks like the aluminum on the CD is being uh, burned away until it can no longer conduct to the rest of the disc. So hold on, go ahead, go ahead and unplug it. Let's try the other side. Jeez. I know this CD, who cares about this in a CD anyways. All right, plug it, plug it in. Not much happens there. The insulation from the acrylic. Okay, turn it off. Hmm. Okay, so what we have here is I just got a nut. And I put I had a, a piece of uh, aluminum MIG welding wire and just kind of stuck it into a hot glue stick, made a hook. So I got a hook up here and a hook right here. And uh, what we're looking for is um, we want to charge the nut and bring that charge to the other can to transfer some electrons and back and forth. And once this, this nut touches this can, it will lose some electrons and then be attracted to this can and back and forth, you know. Okay, try it out. Hmm. Okay, unplug it. That should have worked. Closer. Try that, try that. Okay. Hmm. Unplug it. Maybe maybe the nut's too heavy. Should have worked though, because it's actually pretty powerful for what it is. Hold on. Dang it, I moved it out. Try that. Okay, stop. Closer again. Jeez, come on. Ooh, no, that's too close. Try that. Whoa! Let's back it up a little bit. It's a little too close. Try it now. Stop. It's too close to the edge of the can. Now try. Oh, hold on. That might be okay. Try it. That might be okay. Closer to what you want. <laughs> cool. It's still a little close because you see it's jumping from the can to here. Turn it off. Real quick. It's bugging me. It's bugging me too much. <laughs> Try it again. Mm. See how far we can get them apart. Try that. There you go. That's better. That's what you want. Barely oh, spark. it's still jumping over every once in a while. Ah, well, I give up. Well, this is a dead fluorescent bulb. Um, <clears throat> now, normally, and 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 this, I'm 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 willing to bet this will work with this, but normally there's a heater coil over here and a heater coil over here. And uh, depending on the type of bulb you have, of course, there's a, a jolt of higher voltage than normal, which starts it, okay? 
and then and then there would be your uh, well depending on depending on, on your uh, your fluorescent fixture there could be a um, current limiting transformer which some people call the ballast or or an actual ballast or I don't know um, turn it on see if we get that going Eh, turned right on, man. Now it's a dead bulb. But yeah, of course, when you shoot 20,000 volts through it, <laughs> yeah, it'll work. I mean, it, it could have been that one of these filaments was bad, or who knows. And the problem is, you wouldn't want 20,000 volts at high current to go through this. Um, but since we have so such low current inside a flyback, you know, from a flyback setup here, this is fine. I don't know. I'm trying to think of something to experiment with. I'm starting to get bored, so I might end the video here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm kind of bored. Um, so this is what I'm going to do. Um, well, this is what, I, what I'm about to do here. I cranked, uh, I cranked this uh, high voltage up a little higher. It was, uh, you know, I, I did, I had it set for uh, a 19 inch tube um, but instead I said it's probably sitting around 25 30,000 volts which is really pushing this flyback to its limit and uh, uh, I'm gonna put, put this back together and let's see how how fast we can get this sucker to spin uh, by the way if you want to do this yourself it's literally self-explanatory right here uh, you want a wire going to the center screw and what I did is I wrapped I wrapped uh, 12 gauge copper wire around the screw, and I soldered a, a needle right on the end. Okay, and you see this hole right here? I soldered. Well, first off, I got 12 gauge copper wire, and I um, made this pattern right here. Now, if you want to, you can have it straight with with edges bent this way a little bit, but this is how I liked it. But anyways, um, you know those uh, uh, risers. PCB risers, they're like a metal, metal screw. I uh, soldered that right in the center, and the, and the way this was machined, it makes a nice point, a nice cone in the tip, so it's perfect for that. So I'm just gonna set this still. This is the highest voltage I've run it at so far. Okay, go ahead and plug it in and see what we get. this point and the way so that's about a simple <laughs> turn those on 